Hello everyone and welcome to this mini cast that accompanies the Preparing for a Baby episode. I'm a little wary of that episode because I presented a lot of information that is generally considered negative. Um, so I wanted to address two concerns. One, I'm not making it up. I actually do have backup for these things. And two, this information is not exactly new. When you read some of the links below, you will find a lot of introductions or conclusions have something to say about why doesn't anybody tell us this? We're trying to tell you, um, or at least some people are. There's a lot of people out there that also want to keep this information quiet. Um, there's been various instances. One of them I've linked to below if you'll see the um, American Association of Reproductive Medicine did a PR campaign in the early 2000, or 2000 2001, um, that got silenced and they had to pull it back now. Um, and they tell their story of that below. Uh, but first of all, let's go through one of the things I talked about in the episode was one option for women planning their lives if they want a career and children is to merge early childhood and early motherhood with advanced education. Um, and I made a reference to the fact that this was actually Betty Friedan's original observation in The Feminine Mystique. And in fact, it is. Now, the front of the book, there's, if you go and read it, it's kind of surprising. There's some um, outdated, misunderstood studies. There's a lot of language that people find shocking now. It was, came off differently um, in the 60s, um, but perhaps we'll talk about the reasons for that at another time. But the last chapter was called A New Life Plan for Women, and it was actually quite interesting, quite helpful. I recommend reading it um, for women now. Um, but it does, in fact, contain the bit about merging higher education and early motherhood. Um, and it, you, it comes after a rather well-quoted quote. Um, a woman is handicapped by her sex and handicapped society, either by slavishly copying the pattern of man's advance in the profession or by refusing to compete with man at all. Um, so after that quote that's, that you will find in various places, about two paragraphs later is when you find the discussion of the women who were doing it right were the ones that merged education with motherhood and established the education necessary for the careers that they would want to have later um, and perhaps worked part-time during early motherhood. It's right here. I didn't make it up. Um, the next thing also comes from Betty Friedan, and this was either 1980, 1981. She wrote a second book um, that is not very well known. It went right down the memory hole. But after 10 or so years of touring the country and talking to women, um, she found, well, here, from the first paragraph, the end of the beginning. Mm -hmm. I sense something off, out of focus, going wrong, in the terms by which they are trying to live, they being the women, young women of the time, by the terms in which they are trying to live the equality we fought for. Um, and the book goes on to discuss primarily things involving um, romance and motherhood. Um, so this is the first 1980 discussion, really, a popular discussion about maybe this new plan that we've come up with of establishing your career fully first isn't exactly working out well um, for women. We fast forward a bit more. This was 1999-2000, What Our Mothers Didn't Tell Us by Danielle Crittenden. Um, it has um, a chapter on motherhood that goes through this stuff specifically. Um, then you will find below a link to the New York Times, not really review, New York Times commentary on um, Cynthia, Sylvia Ann Hewitt's book, Creating a Life, which got publicity that books only dream about but yet didn't sell um, and rather baffled the author and the publishers. But it was talking about hey, fertility is limited. Hey, medicine can only do so much. This was about the same time that the um, reproductive medicine group, um, sorry, that was my ice maker, but these are the mini casts, and so sometimes we just deal with that. Um, 
the professional group did a publicity campaign on um, preventing infertility, and it talked about everything from smoking and drinking um, and talked about advanced maternal age, which, by the way, is technically defined as 35. Um, huge pushback. They had to actually pull the campaign in various cities. Um, it was... Frankly, the pushback got more publicity than the campaign did, but then the campaign ended up with some unearned um, publicity that was quite helpful, but you will find that story down below. Um, then we fast forward to more recent times. There was another book um, in 2014. Again, I think it got a lot of publicity, but not a whole lot of um, sales. Um, it's called The Big Lie, about a woman who went through um, telling her story about going through infertility treatments and feeling like she hadn't had um, enough information told to her. Um, there is a new book, or no, there's two more articles out now, one from the Washington Post um, and one from the Telegraph in the UK, both with women discussing their experience with infertility treatment. And my dogs have gone crazy now, we'll call it here. Um, apologies for the quick interruption. That was every dog's nemesis, the delivery guy. Um, they are now settled down. But to finish up, I don't want to continue to lie to young women about um, these statistics. I know they're not happy. I know we want to imagine that we can control um, our biology. But in fact, Mother Nature is still quite firmly in control of that. And Medicine can only really work right around the edges. Um, so in the interest of giving you all the information, there are the links below.